We'll begin building the 3D portion of our cell. Before we start with the actual 3D placements, we have to add a couple more reference lines. These references will represent the left edge of pavement and right edge of pavement that we'll expect to see in our design. We'll make sure these extend beyond our cell area as these are simply references. And the next thing we'll do is we'll add a couple of horizontal features um, on a do not construct level. And these features will be used to represent or to mimic the edge of pavement in our design. We'll be setting these features at a zero offset of our reference line. And we'll snap the start of the feature at the intersect point between our first two references. And then we'll use a key point snap and snap it to the rear or the back of the control line that we placed. So we'll do the same thing for the right side. And before we start applying elevations, we'll shift the cell, if you recall. Place elevations, we will um, test and make sure our snaps are holding up on our edges of pavement. And now we'll come in and we'll start applying elevation. So to apply elevation, we'll first apply it to our reference lines. Here I'll apply a 10 foot elevation to the center. I'll select the two outer references. And in this case, I'll use 9.5 feet. And what we'll actually see is the lines will change color based on the 3D being referenced to our 2D file. Next we want to apply elevation to our control line. So we use the slope offset command. We select the reference and then the reference line and we apply a vertical offset of zero. So we use a 0% slope. Again, we'll follow this. We'll select the element. And then we'll be sure to select the reference. 0% slope using all with no vertical offset. So basically what we're doing is we're both horizontally and vertically offsetting these elements from our reference lines. This way, if our roadway is in super elevation, um, these lines will mimic that super elevation. We'll come in and we'll create a terrain now that we'll call construction terrain. We'll use a no feature. So when we create this terrain, it will pick up symbology from the active level. Um, and the reason um, we're doing this at this time is so we simply see the triangles. Again, make sure to select the linear elements, not the reference elements. So you'll notice we use break lines as a feature type but we'll probably want to change the outer feature types 
to boundary. This will keep the triangulation inside the edge of pavement. So now we see our triangulation straight across and again what we're actually seeing is the triangles that are in the 3D managed view or managed model are being referenced back to our 2D model and we're now going to change the appearance of that terrain so all we see is the boundary so we, we don't need to see the triangles or contours that is a construction terrain the purpose of this terrain is to give a profile to our island or our median so you see I select the median and locate the construction surface we just created and when we follow the prompts we want to lock to the beginning and the end of this element we want to make sure we're selecting all points with no profile adjustment draping on triangles no offset for horizontal and vertical now if we select the element we'll notice that the feature has a profile we can further verify this by opening a profile window and we'll now see the profile and we see that it is active So once we have a profile established, it's time to decide what we're going to do with the median, how or what kind of components will we use, um, what do we need. What we're actually going to do here is I want to use a mountable curb, but I'm going to do this a little bit different. And what I want to do is I want to use the template to draw my horizontal features and not place the component um, so I in this case I know because of the way I joined my horizontal features I know I need to mirror or rather um, reflect this component so I'm just keying x y equals zero comma zero and you see my components been recreated um, as a reflected in a reflected state now under horizontal geometry we have a command that will create the horizontal features that I need and the reality is we could have simply attached that component as a linear template um, but the reason we're doing this is uh, I'm going to attempt to control how that component is shaped with civil features so when I now zoom in after attaching that component I have my break line or my feature lines in my 2D drawing and you can see the various offsets so the next thing we want to do is apply elevations to those elements and just to double check what those elevations are you see we have the curb face point and I can look at that point and see that it's offset a vertical of 0.16 and the curb face top is offset a vertical from the previous point of 0.33 so to assign these elevations we'll use the same slope command slope from element command so we'll come into our vertical geometry
and we'll select the first element, select the reference. The slope will be zero, point selection all, profile none, vertical offset, and here we'll key in 0.16. And then we'll accept that and now we'll slope our curved face from the previous element which now has a profile again slope zero profile adjustment none vertical offset this time will be 0.33 and finally we'll get the back of our curb again we'll slope it off of our previous element at 0% all no adjustment and no offset so now we've defined the elevation for our curb all that's left to do now is to build a surface from these elements So I'll select the three elements, create a new terrain model, enter a name, median, we'll use a break line, edge method none, and you see the triangulation on those three elements. We can now add or we're prompted to add any additional elements. So I'll grab the median edge as the boundary. At this point, our median is substantially complete. We just have a little bit of cleanup work to do, and then we can group it as a cell. So if we look at it in 3D, We'll see our median. The cleanup work will consist of going back to the initial control line, changing the tenth of a foot offset to zero, and now we can group into a cell. The first step is to enter a name for the cell and then go to our reference name and give a description of the first reference that we'll pick. In this case, we'll use the road center line and we'll tab out. And you'll see when we select it, it will start highlighting the attributes. The next reference will pick the starting position line. And again, when highlighted, we'll see the elements highlighting in the cell that are grouping together. The next references will be EOP left and EOP right. And we should see everything highlight and we know that there is good connectivity in the cell because all our elements are now highlighted and now we can just follow our prompts and reset to complete.